second scripture lesson tells that story of Jacob's ladder. It comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 28, verses 10 through 19. Listen now for God's word to you. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of that place, he put it under his head and lay down in that place. And he dreamed that there was a ladder set up upon the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and to your offspring, and your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south, and to all the families, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed in you and your offspring. Know that I am with you and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have, until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head and set it up for a pillar and pulled oil on top of it, and he called that place Bethel. But the name of the city was Luz at first. Though the grass may wither and the flowers may fade, the word of our Lord endures forever. This month, we will be daring to dream. Our scripture lessons for the next four weeks will feature dreamers, big dreamers in the Bible. And with that, we'll be thinking about what our hopes and dreams are for our church family, maybe a hopeful post-COVID future. We still hope, right? What is God dreaming for us? Well, the best place to start with such a task is the source itself, the Bible, of course. And the Bible is chalked full of dreams and visions and messages from God about what's happening in our present or what might be in store for the future or even about things we don't quite understand. As I was preparing for this series, I kept remembering an episode of This American Life, the radio show, This American Life, um, there was an episode a few years ago, ago that was entitled, The Seven Things You're Not Supposed to Talk About. And in the episode, dream, Your Dreams was number four. According to the person they interviewed, that person said that dreams are only interesting to the person who dreamt it and completely boring to others to listen to. Maybe you agree. I remembered this episode because, well, I disagree with it. I am one of those folks who has really vivid dreams, and I enjoy processing them with my family and friends, though perhaps my family and friends don't enjoy processing them with me. The thing is, is that the Bible itself is filled with other people's dreams, which people have in fact talked about for thousands of years. I don't find it boring at all. So let's go against the grain and talk about our dreams, and I will try very hard not to bore you. The other morning, in fact, my family and I were talking about our dreams, and we each told about a dream, a recent dream that we had that really remained vivid to us. 
Kyle had dreamt that he was back in England at the college campus where he studied abroad, but in the dream he was unable to find an apartment. Susanna said she had dreamt of swimming underwater. Actually, she's dreamt, talked about this dream for a couple weeks, so it was a really big one for her, swimming underwater. Simon said he dreamt of Pete the cat. <laughs> and I dreamt, this was the other night, I dreamt I had tested positive for COVID, but instead of staying home, I went out shopping for new shoes. <laughs> I did actually go out shopping for real new shoes. And apparently Dream Me knew that that was a possibility. In our very small experiment, we found each other's dreams so interesting that we tried to examine them for meaning. And I even looked up our dreams in a dream, in a dream dictionary. And there I found that if you are dreaming of a college campus or an education setting, it means you are going through a type of change that is teaching you something new about yourself. Dreaming of swimming underwater means you are finding freedom to do a new thing. That checks out. Uh, Susanna was excited about the dream because she wants to learn how to swim. Dreaming of breaking the rules, such as I did in my COVID dream, means you are having feelings of frustration. So that checks out, I suppose. <laughs> And um, dreaming of Pete the cat, well, that wasn't in the dream dictionary. But I surmise it means you really like Pete the cat. <laughs> Yet in all of these dictionaries and all of this research that's done on dream interpretation over these many, many years, I wonder if it ever really helps us get to the heart of that lived dream experience. When we have those weird dreams that we just don't understand or dreams that are so vivid that we can't get those images out of our head, or ones that felt so real in the moment, but we can't quite remember when we wake up. You know, the dreams of our biblical ancestors were very similar. Some were really odd. Some made a lot of sense. Some gave a clear meaning. Some gave a prediction for the future. Some just confused them further. But in all of it, we see that God does, in fact, speak to us in our dreams if we're open enough to hear it. So today we come to our first dreamer, Jacob. Now I look up Jacob's dream in the dream dictionary, and dreaming of a ladder, according to the dictionary, means you have the ability to climb above any problems in your life. That's nice. And dreaming of angels means you have been given a message from God about goodness and protection in the heavenly realm. That is certainly what Jacob hears in the dream when God gives him a message of promise and protection. But let's go back a bit in the day uh, that Jacob had before he had this dream. Because often, the things we experience in our days often tend to crop up in our dreams as memories re-envisioned. Bless you. Jacob, as we know, is the younger of the twins born to Isaac and Rebekah. Younger by a few seconds, of course. And Jacob has had to take a back seat ever since. But by the time we find him dreaming of ladders, he has basically burnt all the bridges he has with his family. He has tricked his father, and he has swindled his brother Esau out of his birthright and his blessing. He is now on the run from his brother who seeks revenge and possibly his life. And so running away from his own family and from what he has done, Jacob is exhausted, and he finds a safe place in the middle of nowhere and lays down and goes to sleep with nothing but a rock underneath his head. He lays down in the desert with that stone under his head, and he falls asleep, and there he dreams that he stumbles upon the gates of heaven. In his dream, a ladder reaches from his place on earth all the way up to heaven, and angels are climbing up and down it. And then God comes all the way down the ladder and stands beside Jacob and talks to him. And there God promises to be with Jacob, to be with his family. God promises to bless his offspring and to be with them wherever they go. And there, 
God promises never to leave Jacob. It's then that God and the angels and the ladder fade away, and Jacob wakes up and finds himself alone again with a rock as a pillow. And he wakes up from this incredibly vivid dream with a sense of awe and wonder. Now, he doesn't make a comment about the angels or the strange ladder or the fact that God stood right beside him in his dream. He doesn't even say that it seems that God has appeared to him despite what he did to his brother. Instead, he makes a proclamation. Jacob says, Surely God is in this place, and I did not know it. How awesome is this place? There is none other than the house of God. Jacob wakes up with the very real sense that he is in the very presence of God. Right there, right where he was, God was there with him. I wonder if understanding our dreams is not about trying to figure out what God is telling us to do or what we're afraid of or what deep life meaning we can uncover. What if understanding our dreams is the simple recognition that God is in this place, right where we are, even while we're sleeping? We don't have to have big, wondrous dreams about the gates of heaven. We don't even have to dream at all to wake up with the recognition that God is here with me in this place, even if I didn't know it. See, in Jacob's dream, that was exactly what God promised to Jacob's descendants. Jacob's descendants means us, right? God promised to be with us, to keep us wherever we go, and not to leave us. For no matter where we are, or what we're going through, or what we're running from, or what we're running to, God is there. And maybe the gates of heaven aren't too far off. God is here. Despite what we're doing, God is in this place doing great and amazing things. Do we see it? God is here, despite what you are doing, right where you are. God is there. Do you know it? God is here, even while you sleep, even while you daydream, Even while you dream big dreams, God is here, even if you don't know it. Dr. Craig Barnes, who's the president of Princeton Seminary, uh, wrote about Jacob's spectacular dreams, and he noticed that in the dream that Jacob isn't even on that ladder. We sing in the song that Jacob's climbing the ladder, but in the Bible, um, as it reports his dream, he does not go up it. The angels do. And God comes down the ladder to be with Jacob. And Barnes writes, Jacob just receives the blessing by grace. You see, when it comes to dreams, the only good ones come from God. And God insists on just giving them to us. The most important dreams are things like being loved, beholding beauty, discovering your purpose in life, finding joy in your work, or finding a friend who will stick with you through anything. And those are God's dreams for us, too. So friends, what is your dream? What is God dreaming for your next steps? Whatever you are dreaming for in your life, God's promise to us in Jacob's dream is this, that God will be with you no matter where, no matter what. So let's dream big. Let's remember that the gates of heaven are right here in this place. May we wake up each day and proclaim, surely God is in this place and I did not know it. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. (coughs) 
God, surely you are in this place. How awesome is this? That even though we don't see it or hear it or recognize it, you are still here. God, remind us that no matter if we are sleeping or waking or working or playing, that you are with us wherever we are. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.